From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free-to-air decoders, smart TVs with built-in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics. Grab yours today. Hello guys, this is the Chief Air Marshal Ola 7 Owen We Kwamadonto here on the Ola 7 podcast show. We are back again with the genius kids and the show that focuses in all that focuses on our kids who are talented in all aspects of life. We celebrate them by giving them a platform in order to showcase their talent and please let us support them in the best way we can. So on today's episode, I'm joined by debaters from Mother Patrick's uh, Convenient Primary School in Waterfalls, so which is a uh, Catholic uh, school run by Dominican sisters. So yeah, I'm joined by Kunashe Mukura and of course uh, Tanatswa Musengei and uh, it's going to be an interesting debate guys, trust me, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, fasten your seatbelts, <laughs> it's about to take off. Alright guys, how are you um, Kunashe? Um, I'm great, how are you? I'm good and so briefly tell us about yourself before we get into the you know uh, core business. Um, so as you stated, my name is um, Kunashe Mukura. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a 13 year old at the school, Mother Patrick Convent Primary School yeah. in Waterfalls, Harare, which is Catholic, Roman Catholic based and is run by the Dominican Sisters. Wow, great. Awesome. And uh, Tanatwa? Oh, my name is Tanatwa Msingi. Um, I come from Mother Patrick. I'm 13. Our school is run by Dominican Sisters. Yeah, that's it for me. And so uh, Kunash will be representing the affirmative side. Yes. And. Uh, and that's why non affirmative is gonna be interesting, guys. So, yeah, let's quickly you know dive into it. So, um, you know, the students, these students, guys, they participated in the primary schools debate challenge and national competitions in March this year and qualified for the Southern competitions held in Beira, Mozambique in July again this year. So, from uh, the Southern uh, competitions, they competed against uh, Southern countries and qualified for the Pan African Junior Schools Debate Challenge in uh, which which was held in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. You know, I love this. I mean, those are not far about these kids. You know, amazing kids. What you know, almost Zimbabwe representing our country. So yeah, that was in November. Uh, this last month, they came back recently. What you don't know, Nairobi guys. What you don't know, Randegi. So in Kenya, they contested in the finals against Uganda and became the uh, second best and the best in the relay. Speeches, well done, guys. Well done. Both Remo, ah, both Remo. What a big guy! I love that. I love that. So, okay, tell me about um, the Kenyan experience when you went there. Um, I'll ladies. start with Tanaza. Yes, ladies. Kenya was very exciting for me. Um, the day before we went, I remember I was playing music the whole day because I was oh. excited. And I didn't sleep because our flight was at 2 a.m. Uh -huh. so I didn't sleep and I was excited. When we got there, we met different people during the competition. Mm -hmm. um, language barriers weren't a problem mm -hmm. because most of them spoke English, but then the experience was very difficult. Oh. We fought. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, was, it was a good one. Yes. A good experience. Mm -hmm. And you, Kunasha? Um, I would say that this such experience was phenomenal and quite challenging at the same time <laughs> how how fun it was how getting the experience to go out of the country mm -hmm. going to meet other countries going to meet other ch language barriers as well and the challenging part was how we didn't know what to expect mm -hmm. we didn't know what to expect from these such countries um is um Tanatswa stated the language barriers weren't a problem mm -hmm. and um diversity in cultures as well mm -hmm. but we managed to get along with each other cooperating mm -hmm. and ah it mm -hmm. was a phenomenal experience Wow. Okay, so I will start by asking uh, affirmative side. That's you. Yes. Okay, I want to talk about uh, computers. Um, what is it that you call a computer? Um, so a computer from our delegation, we see it as an electronic device that processes and um, stores information or data. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, is this one of the topics that, that you, you, know, you touched on when you were in Kenya? Yes, very much. It was um, the topic for the third round. Third round? Yes. And you did so well? Yes, uh, we managed to qualify. Okay, great. So guys, these guys are going to showcase you know, what they did in Kenya. So we're going to see... 
Kenya. Oh, it was just like one of those things. So we're gonna find out. So okay, uh, how is uh, world without computers, you know, um, beneficial to kids both at home and school? Um, there are many factors whereby um, world without computers can be beneficial to us as kids, both at our schools, at homes. Um, such factors, for example, when you're at home, um, these such computers can affect us in ways, for example, pornography, and as well, they can affect us in ways, for example, like cyberbullying. Yes. And uh, when we are at um, school, such computers, if you were to go on social media, mm-hmm. and uh, it would disrupt you, it would um, disrupt your focus onto your own schoolwork, and therefore, you are mainly too focused onto these such mm-hmm. Computers. This mm-hmm. is why our side we see it is more crucial mm. for there to be a world without such computers. Wow. So I think no, com- no to computers. Yes. Wow. Uh, Tanato, are you in agreement with what uh, Kunash no, is saying? Yeah. Okay. Let's hear your side then. What are you saying? Um, I'm saying that computers at school helped us, especially in the COVID-19 era. We know that we didn't have a way to come to school and to communicate. We had radio lessons for those who can't afford the computers. Mm-hmm. We also had um, online lessons for those who can afford it, and we had television lessons, which broadcasted at 12. Oh. So what are you saying? Look. Um. Me personally, I, I honestly disagree with it. Because if you look at COVID-19 as itself, <laughs> uh-huh. it's a disease that mainly affects your respiratory system. Yeah. And if you look, most people abuse such computers, therefore going into um less physical activity, mm-hmm. and therefore which affects your cardiovascular system, which as well touches the respiratory system, mm. how the disease itself is, how it works. So basically, we see as if that still, these such computers were causing such a disease to even be more deadlier than what it was. <sighs> Supposed Ow. to be. Ow, you're wrong. Listen here. Did you know that um, most computers that children use in this um, debate were talking especially how computers affect children? Did you know that even children have a time limit to use these computers so they can't use them from um, day to night? But I assure you that most of these children will listen to this time limit. I'm sure because these time limits aren't set by the children, they're set by the parents and the users. But don't you think that there are some children who may not want to listen to their parents, therefore, by using most social media platforms. Kunashi, I'm sorry, but your, but your point is very invalid because... Um, <laughs> your point is invalid because no, no, you don't know what COVID-19 <laughs> is. These, um, these um, um, time limits aren't set by the children themselves. The apps they are using set these time limits. You are talking about time limits, but you don't know what the disease itself is because you are mainly talking about but COVID-19. Right, let me just interject there, uh, uh, Kunashi. Honestly, like, let's, talk, let, let's get back to this issue of uh, you know, computers. Look, listen, during the COVID-19, mm-hmm. remember we were seeing, you know, data collection on, uh, on computers, mm-hmm. and they were very helpful. Mm-hmm. And I was like glued on TV like this, you know, these guys were just, you know, uploading, you know, like the numbers, like now one million people died. They were collecting data using computers. Mm-hmm. They were very helpful. You know, you're saying no. No, yes. We, they were helpful during mm-hmm. the time in this type of statistics that you're talking about. Exactly. But we look at some places that didn't have the access to this. For example, remote places. Mm-hmm. For example, rural areas. They didn't have the access to this. And as well, that for you to view these such um, technological data mm-hmm. which were put up, you needed expenses. That's another valid factor mm-hmm. as well like about data. the type of expenses. Mm-hmm. It, it was expensive to buy these such data. Imagine one Wanting to spend almost about five hundred dollars mm-hmm. on a computer just for you to view the statistics, mm. but you could view it in um, public places. You could view them in public libraries, and you may say that um, the disease could mm-hmm. spread there. But that's why they will now put regulations like face mask mm-hmm. and as well a social distancing. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't risk my life just to go to a library. That's why in remote areas they used radios. They didn't have the technology, but they had radios. Yes, they didn't have the technology. They had these such radios. But do you care to think about how much, like, for example, they, for you to use these such radios, you have to use broadcasting systems. Would you ever care to think about the amount of, um, obviously, they would have to share um, a bit of money to uh-huh. buy these such uh-huh. radios. Yeah. But instead, if we had such a world without them, everything was going to be okay. Mm. Everything was going to be great. And, um, our po- and our topic is not about a world without technology. Yeah. It's about a world without Computers. <laughs> Therefore, your point is invalid. And that's why you're caught there. I, I am sure you're trapped there. Yeah. In between. Uh, are you defeated? No. <laughs> What do you have to say? Never stand defeated. I have to say that, yes, the topic does read computers. Exactly. But you know that, Kunashi, even radios can fall under computers. Yes, that's why we say we don't want a world without them. 
technology versus computers. Because she was talking, she there was a point where she stated about technology. Uh-huh. But I'm saying we are talking about computers, computers. not technology per uh-huh. se. So radio fall under technology. Is that what you're, saying? what you're saying? No, we are not saying that radio falls under technology. Mm-hmm. We are saying that radio falls under computers. computers. And for you to get these such radios, we are talking about expenses mm-hmm. and how expensive it is to yeah. get these such radios. Mm-hmm. This is why we are saying it would be better to find out the alternatives mm-hmm. other than them. As I stated, for example, public libraries. Exactly. And... But then I have a point I want to raise on your point. Kunashi public libraries were closed during the time of COVID-19. And did you know that even when you can't afford radios, um, you can even ask a neighbor to lend you one? Or um, the government also did, um, uh, I think it was somewhere around the COVID-19 mm-hmm. year, the government went and lended radios to people in the remote areas. Mm-hmm. Um, Yes, the government would have went to um, give people lended um, these such radios. Yeah. And as well, but I would like to touch on a point you stated about meeting each other with neighbors. Mm-hmm. COVID-19, it was, we were not supposed to meet interactively. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID-19, social distancing, social distancing as yeah. I stated, why would you want to meet with your ma- neighbor? Curfews. Yes, you may be say, curfews as well. Mm-hmm. You may be talking about public libraries being closed. Me, personally, as I saw it, most public libraries were not um, closed per se, but mm-hmm. there's a certain period when they were opened. Then they would now be closed. Therefore, they would now introduce what we call curfews, oh, as yes. you stated yes. as well. Yes. So, I see as if what you are saying about this type of um, computers being brought in, they are still in a way invalid and irrelevant because mm-hmm. we had other better alternatives. Mm-hmm. And as well, the point that these such computers, some people would abuse them as well. Mm-hmm. And when they abuse, we now get into um, bad um, behavior, like sedentary mm-hmm. behavior, mm-hmm. therefore leading to cardiovascular, cardiovascular mm-hmm. diseases as well as respiratory diseases, which is COVID-19 itself. Mm-hmm. Therefore, your point is invalid once again wow Sorry, Kunashe, but i want to hear um from mr ola's perspective mm-hmm. what do you prefer mr ola spending the whole day in the library looking for information or just going online and researching oh yeah it's a it's a very difficult one but i would choose a computer because i have one i have one already and it's easy for me just to say okay there is covid what is covid quickly yes um Yes, you would choose a computer. Mm-hmm. Almost many people choose computers. Yeah. But would you care to consider the fact about something that we call Maui? You can open your computer, yes, you can search, but did you ever care to consider about things that may be outdated mm-hmm. or scams online, whereby this type of information you're looking for cannot be the, um, the real thing. The real thing they are the fakes. Yes, mm-hmm. they're not the accurate thing. They're actually fakes. So would you care to consider that? Oh. Yeah, that's now in, um, a different issue, I think. Um, yeah, I have to be very, very careful about those, you know, scammers and whatnot. But I still need a computer. That's what I think. I still need a computer. But okay, uh, anyways, how best can we then minimize the negative impact, you know, of our computers on humans and uh, the environment? How best can we? Um, all right. Um, we don't see as if that um, our side or our delegation doesn't see. We are not saying that without computers, we just um, remove them. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. We are left with nothing as humans. We are just like that. Just the, mm-hmm. No, we are saying we should look for other alternatives mm-hmm. other than these such computers. Mm-hmm. As I stated, we have many other alternatives as well. Mm-hmm. You have um, reading into novels. These such novels, they improve what's called, um, they can improve you mentally. Mm-hmm. They can improve your reading capabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have, as I stated as well, about these public libraries as well, a cheaper way, a more better way. We also have, um, as I stated, um, uh, no, there's something we have letters. Mm-hmm. We also have letters. These such letters can help as well in terms of communication. But these are the other type of um, alternatives mm-hmm. that we have. Letters. Letters, That's yes. like an old, old, old stuff thing, right? You know, I, don't yeah. remember, I, 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 I don't remember where the last time I, used, I, I, I saw a postman, you know, using a bicycle Sorry. to deliver a letter. Imagine ah. the letter getting delivered at another house. Hey. Yes, yes, it can be challenging at times. But <laughs> what do you prefer? Rather than you um, maybe writing something on a letter right. or using a typewriter, mm-hmm. 
done for you to be using technology yes it can help you but could you care to think about the fact that when you're using this technology sometimes due to the brightness of computers mm-hmm. they say um you may get affected uh, your cornea mm-hmm. and you may be affected um eyesight mm-hmm. so then for you to not be affected such eyesight that you were gifted to mm-hmm. you can rather um have like what i said i'm um, typing therefore improving yeah. your mental state mm-hmm. as well Oh, let me come uh, to you, Tanato. Um, I've heard you saying something like, you know, uh, okay, you are opposing uh, yes. Takura. But I want, uh, I mean, Kunash, I mean, but I want to understand, you know, why do you prefer a world without computers? Um, I would want... I mean, with... I would want a world with computers because they help us even financially. Um, we, we have online banking and even shopping. You don't have to go. Um, you don't have to go physically to the shop. You can um, shop online, and also it helps also with like entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, these days we want something to entertain us during our leisure time, and computers help with that. Even education. Um, most mm-hmm. people travel. Um, occupations these days include traveling. Mm-hmm. So maybe you travel with your parents, but online lessons. Make it easier for the parents so that the child can be left and they're learning. Mm. Wow. You understand that one, uh, Konashe? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're defeated. Ah, no, no ah. not even, not even. Uh, defeated. He's refusing. He's saying no. Still, is, uh, you still in? Yes, I'm still in very much. Oh, very let's much. Um, is what Sanat was stated about, um, I want to touch on the point you stated about online banking. Yes. Yes, we can have online banking. Mm-hmm. You may see it easier, easier access. Mm-hmm. But did you know that, um, as I stated in terms of malware, we have different types of malware. Mm-hmm. Let's look, for example, we have um, spyware. Such spyware some people can use to um, hack your computers, mm-hmm. therefore looking into your bank details. Therefore, it now can be easier for them to access your bank details. And when it's easier for them to access your bank details, it's not easier for them to take and steal you your information much more easier online mm-hmm. and as well as looking at other um, points like um online shopping mm-hmm. yes it can be easier to shop online than for you to be going all the way to the shops mm-hmm. buying yes you can say that but as well as i stated about the point of malware yes. if you were to look at it for example they can be scams mm-hmm. online mm-hmm. as i once stated about scams yeah. and as well we have something another mm-hmm. form or type of malware called the trojan horse oh, the what trojan. It, yes yeah. What the Trojan horse basically does, it may come a bit more fun, may come everything all right, maybe an <laughs> advertisement, you know, you feel juicy, you feel great. Exactly, exactly. But then all of a sudden, the moment you click it, now uh, you're like, what's happening? What's happening here? Then maybe you had um, money that you wanted to buy it's it, gone it's, it's gone. You don't buy anything, that everything's is a gone. Concern. Or, or, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure now I'm a bit, you know, confused now. I think Kanasha is living in the 90s because last time I checked, there are antiviruses that can read these. Um... Oh, okay. That's a bit of a relief now. <laughs> oh, and last time Ooh. I checked as well, for you to get these type of antiviruses, some of them are outdated and do not update them properly. <laughs> and as well, that some of these <laughs> antiviruses I mean, are expensive. Ah, look. <laughs> They're expensive as well. He's not scaring me as well. Okay. Uh, they can't even update now? Yes. Some of them, they are out, outdated to the point that they can't update. Hey. And even if you were to update them, uh-huh. obviously, as I once stated, why mm-hmm. would you want to spend over $10 to update such antiviruses? And as well, as for you to um, use them mm-hmm. or to update them, you need something called Wi-Fi or raw data. Why would you want to spend money on a monthly subscription to um, subscribe into these antiviruses, therefore wasting even more money mm-hmm. than for you to be doing maybe an even more but proper way. Are, we are, we are, we are, we, I mean, we want. Yes, that's why we don't want it. That's why our side doesn't want it. I don't it. know about you, Kunashe, but I prefer to pay $10 to pay for my antivirus than to buy a plane ticket just to so, tell someone news. That exactly, in my life. exactly. So, I mean, uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this one. What do you schools and uh, the society benefit from the presence you know, of computers? Um, computers can help even with um, disease control, communication. We can communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, disease control, we can even go online, search about diseases. We had a cholera outbreak in Zimbabwe recently. Um, we can research about ways to prevent cholera, um, the spread of cholera, and we can research more about it, learn about it, and the community can benefit from this. Mm. And I want to know again, how best, I mean, can schools and the society uh, manipulate computers uh, to their advantage? 
Um, I would say that to manipulate the advantage, they can um, help uh, children. Um, teachers can give children computers. You know, I hate learning from a textbook. I want to see something visually. I want to see it in front of me. Mm. I want to project it to show me. Yes. Because I don't always believe what's in the textbook. Mm. I want to see it for myself. Yeah. So I feel like um, teachers can give us um, these computers. Mm-hmm. We can see for ourselves and learn for ourselves. Yes. Um, can I share something about children going beyond their um, um, restrictions? Yes. But um, teachers will be watching them during these school times. Oh, yes. yes. And we don't uh, always mean that children bring their own computers. Mm-hmm. Children um, are not allowed to bring their own computers. Instead, teachers... On point of interjection, yes. mm-hmm. um, you are talking about teachers may not always... Um, no, teachers always see students. So do you expect one teacher to see a class of over 30 children, to see each one of them, what they're doing? <laughs> How does that um, make sense to you? I think that's why I raised the case that um, teachers should not allow children to bring their phones to school. Instead, the teachers should give the children... Their computers. I was about to ask that one, uh, that question uh, about um, your take on cell phones in schools. Um, yes, is um, myself as well. I see that um, teachers should not um, bring. I mean, children, sorry, mm-hmm. should not bring cell phones to school. Mm-hmm. But why? as well, but as why? Um, I see as if as what I stated about mm-hmm. distractions. Yes. children can be distracted online. Mm-hmm. But as well as um, replying back to Tanatwa, mm-hmm. most schools have computer labs, and in these such computer labs, um, children can do um malicious things mm-hmm. or mischievous things mm-hmm. in them. It's not necessarily them bringing their own cell phones mm-hmm. to school mm-hmm. it can also be about these such computers being at the school oh, themselves yeah 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 but last time i checked um these computers are being watched and administrated that means even if a, ch- a child goes beyond their um restrictions mm-hmm. a teacher gets reported of this and the child can get help some some children as you know can use um other apps on these such computers to not be tracked some children is can also be a uh, more technologically advanced as mm. is, is i can state they can be more techno technologically so advanced if they can do it in schools what's gonna stop them doing it at their homes exactly if they can do this like okay Chandra, seriously if they can do this in schools what stops them dj ola imagine yeah. if you are at school and then you are a child uh maybe a bit more technologically yeah. advanced you know how to go through these ways of these teachers yes. um, administering yes. your movement stuff like that uh-huh. what more at home she was talking about restrictions at home but as i stated some children not listen to this <laughs> what more at home what more <laughs> I would honestly say that at home, children have emails. These emails are being are also being watched. Imagine your parent getting a message that um from the from your email that your child has gone beyond their restriction. Mm-hmm. Imagine um your par- how your parents will feel. Imagine the scolding you will get. And mm-hmm. I don't like getting scolded, so. But as well, you can imagine that children can create new accounts which are not monitored by their parents. But how can they create these accounts, Kunashi, when the parents can see what they're doing on their laptops? Even after you go to sleep, mm. um, my laptop is kept in my parents' room. So even after I go to sleep, they can go on my computer, they can see um, accounts I have logged into. My email can show them. You can delete this type of account, first of all. <laughs> second of all, wait, second of all, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Second of all, if you were to go on to Google right now, as I speak, there's something called a guest account, which is an anonymous account, you which can cannot be tracked. You can do whatever you, you want. Do you know what the guest account was used for in the 90s? It was used um, when a guest comes to your house and they want to use your computer, mm-hmm. but then still, even if they do things that are uh, beyond their restrictions, it will still report to your main account. It does not say he was doing this a billion D. Um, I'm not sure why Tanato is lying right now because whatever <laughs> happens with the guest account doesn't <laughs> go <laughs> anyway. <laughs> She's lying, no, like, no, Kunasha, you can see that you're doing things that are beyond your restrictions because how do you know these things? Because I'm talking about things that have s- s- facts that are proven. <laughs> I'm talking things that are fact. You are not speaking facts, I'm talking facts. <laughs> But Simple. When the um, child is under the age of 18, the account is under the age of 18. I'm sure their guest account reports. The guest account reports to where exactly? To their main account. Which main account? Oh, the main account um, that you have. Um, which is under control of their parents. Um, as a child, you can also set 
in your own age limit you can lie <laughs> online as well so therefore yeah you say you're 25 because uh, yeah, uh. um me personally i've um experienced for example um when i wanted to play games uh-huh. on my phone once normally i want to play maybe i want to play a shooter game mm-hmm. let's say i'm two um, i was 10 years old mm-hmm. i want to play a shooter game if i put my exact age it tells me that ah you're too young to play this game <laughs> yes, yes. so then i'll just say that i'm 17 or 16 <laughs> for me to just play so a game about play you yes, say i can just ah, play the game guys, so children can do the same thing lie online uh-huh. and therefore it's like easy yeah. to go around the you way to go around the system you've you done it before yeah me yeah yes you on on, ga- on games oh. yes on games <laughs> no how then do you know it was games only i know it was again trust <laughs> me trust me trust <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is crazy, guys. The genius kids. Yeah, this is the All of Seven podcast show. Your number one podcast in the land. I'm your host, All of Seven. I'm talking to these guys, uh, you know, from Mother Patrick um, Covent uh, Primary School and they're uh, in grade seven. So, I, I mean, let's talk about your results, guys. You know, we're about to wrap up, but uh, let's talk about your results. You guys, results just came out recently. Yes. Can I talk? Um, we did both Cambridge and Zimsek oh. and we were very successful. Wow. For my Zimsek, I got a 10. For my Cambridge, I got an outstanding high, high. High, high. <laughs> a round of applause, guys. <laughs> this is just amazing, guys. Honestly, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. And uh, you, uh, Kunashe? Um, as Tanato stated as well, this year we wrote both um, Cambridge Checkpoint Examinations yes. and Zimsec Examinations. In the Zimsec, I got um, nine units. Mm-hmm. And as well, in the Cambridge Assessment, I got three outstandings. Another round of applause! <laughs> but okay, what was the point of writing both? What's the point of writing both? Oh, uh, Zimsek and Cambridge? I feel like when you write both, you have a wider range of um, what you want to do. Because most things these days need um, Cambridge. Because Cambridge goes deeper mm-hmm. into what you do. And so when you go outside the country, they'll ask for a Cambridge oh, report. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I feel like writing Cambridge has helped me pick it's my... International. Yes. Oh. It's international. Oh, same applies. Um, I, yeah, almost same applies. Uh, my mom also once told me that um, it's better to have what I call double boards. Uh-huh. That's both the board of Cambridge yes. and as well the board of Zimsek. Mm-hmm. So these two examinations help you wherever you want to go oh, and as yes. well that you see yourself on a certain level mm-hmm. of writing these two examinations wow. which help wow. internationally and nationally. Wow, this is amazing, guys. I can't believe it. And, um, okay, now you're going to Form 1. Yes. Yes. And uh, it's it's going to be a whole new experience altogether. Uh, are you not scared, nervous? Uh, me when I was um, a bit young, um, last year uh-huh. in grade six, yeah, I was a bit scared. It was, uh-huh. I was like, Oof, next year, next year, but one is going to be body. Exactly. And I'm like. Mm. I might not be looking good. Exactly. But uh, this year, um, with preparation from uh, my family and yes. stuff, uh, I see everything. Um, mm-hmm. Everything will be well. So, so well. Yes. And, uh, you know, you'll be living away from your parents, you know, like, yeah. let's say you're in you're boarding. Yes. Um. Yeah, I believe in the way of my parents, mm-hmm. how they um teach me, how they guided me, mm-hmm. how they teach, taught me these morals and values yes, as well yes. so I like yeah the point where you said morals and values but the reason why i'm asking about this there is a certain school that i'm not going to name here on air but next time i would i would i would name drop um which is you know but uh, allegations of uh, drug abuse in schools and in high schools i was not expect I, I don't expect it in primary schools of course even in high schools but it's happening so what are you going to do about that issue of drug abuse it, it's just rampant these days um this issue about drug abuse as well it has been um a topic mm-hmm. that we have done in the competitions in the past as you stated for example in sadak mm-hmm. and um as well that we can um spread it um uh, <laughs> i don't want to, to support a topic but online as well oh. <laughs> physically. online as well yes. Oi, what you don't want is online thing <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> but it's okay through you... technology but not with computers, not with computers. Oh, yeah okay <laughs> I feel like um, also the um, topic of drugs can be discussed at community level. Mm-hmm. You can get counseling from the elders, even your parents. You can be taught about um, the effects of drugs mm-hmm. and how they are killing. Because um, a person who drinks, um, dr- a person who consumes drugs, yeah. is um, bound to suicide. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that uh, point. So what also, you know, ap- ap- apart from what you've said, are you going to do when you, you know, get into 
this space, the O-level space now, about drugs? I am, me personally, I'm going to try to educate the people around me. As a person who has done debate, I'll try to introduce it. Um, I didn't know much about drugs, but mm -hmm. then because I joined debate, I don't know a lot about drugs. Yeah. So I'm going to try to introduce different ways to teach people, um, whether it be it, um, drama, whether it be it, um, debate, mm -hmm. um, to teach people how to stop um, the consumption of drugs. Yeah. Even if you're already an addict, there's mm -hmm. always a future for you. You can stop now. Wow. That's so powerful, guys. You know, coming from these youngsters here, telling us about drugs. You know, dr stop drug abuse, guys. You are the future. These guys are the future. And they're telling us right now that, you know, they'll be teaching you guys to stop drugs. Uh, be it in schools, uh, churches, homes, I mean, societies, different places. Uh, drug abuse is just something else right now. But uh, before you guys go, what is it that you want to, you know, tell those who are watching at home? Ladies, ladies first. I want to tell those watching at home that um, let's help address the rights of children. Let's stop child marriage, drug abuse, and child pregnancies. Wow, that's so powerful. Um, I would like to tell those back at home that never give up in whatever you want to do. Um, whenever you fall down, don't remember that you have a dream to achieve. Whenever you fall down, always pick yourself up. Um, know that even at the tiniest level you are, you can become into the biggest and into the best you want to be. Look at myself. I started so small, but look where I am now. So I believe that everyone can believe in themselves. And I also believe that you can also believe in yourself. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. That's very, very, very powerful. Mother Padre Convent Primary School, you see these very intelligent guys. I'm sure you can also um, send your, your child to Mother Patrick as well. Ah, I, I'm, I'm thinking, guys, with the I think I'm going to talk Mother Patrick. These guys are so sharp, man. That's so sharp. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> so we are just taking a short break. Then we'll come back with another pair, okay? Okay, now I'm going to put them on spot. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but the next set or the next pair, uh, they will be under fire. <laughs> okay, so just a short break. We'll be right back. We're not your average service providers. We don't just provide average fuel stopovers in Dema, Chikwana, Zico, St. Mary's, Budiriro, Glenara Avenue, and a new one coming soon to Murewa. We are beyond kings and queens of our service industries. We are bigger than most. We are giants. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy. Welcome back to the All of Seven Podcast Show, the best podcast show in the land. And this is the Genius Kids Show, the Genius Kids segment. I love this one, but I love kids, you know. I just love kids. And in fact, I love it uh, when these kids uh, in different aspects. You know, some tons of vegetables, rich coral, some vegetables, my talents, some they are musicians, some, you know, I just love that about kids. So right now I'm talking to these kids from Mother Patrick and they're here, you know, they've been uh, to Kenya, uh, South Africa, Mozambique, you know, they've been just moving around. Ah, you guys, and now it's a continuation. I now have Tafara on the couch and Takutsuka. So, ah, I know, what a coincidence. Um, okay, not a coincidence per se. Takutsuka happens to uh, to be Tanatwa's little twin brother. Twin brother! Ah. <laughs> and they're both on this, you know, uh, show. What an honor. So, guys, tell me about yourself briefly. I am a 13 year old. I am also a very, very proud member of the Mother Patrick community mm -hmm. and also a very proud member of the Pan African debate um, challenge for the Zimbabwe national team. Wow. Uh, my name is Tafaran Zaman. I learn at Mother Patrick Convent Primary School, which is a Catholic school run by the Dominican Sisters, a school that thrives in intellectual practices. Uh, holistic practices mm -hmm. and also sporting activities. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very powerful. So we've been talking about uh, computers, you know. So you are representing the affirmative, affirmative, affirmative side, then non-affirmative. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So let's talk about computers. I've asked um, Tanato earlier on to tell us about, uh, you know, um, what you really call a computer. I want to start from the affirmative side. All right. 
Um, our affirmative delegation believes that computers are electronic gadgets that store or process data. And also these, are, these can be derived from artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, your take on that one, uh, Tafara? Uh, our side believes that computers are a key to accessing the internet key to accessing the internet. the internet so okay and uh, how is the world without computers beneficial to kids at home and at school same question personally speaking um i would like to start off by mentioning that um schools uh can benefit with computers but at the same time it can be a form of distraction mm -hmm. and also i would like to start off by uh bringing in a very very important factor mm -hmm. that computers sometimes do the work for people mm -hmm. i'll take a very good um example yeah is um i have finished my grade seven mm -hmm. examinations now colors were introduced and i believe that not all children are doing their colors by themselves mm -hmm. some are using um artificial intelligence sites yes. like ask.ai mm -hmm. yeah. or even chat gtp mm -hmm. so i feel like um computers they are people are being more reliant on computers day by day mm -hmm. which is a very negative impact on our health and also our how, mental how, state. how is that a negative i believe it's negative because we're too reliant on computers mm -hmm. uh some of the daily tasks which are um, very very simple it can be as simple as just writing a summary about a book mm -hmm. maybe um you were assigned that uh challenge by your librarian mm -hmm. at school where um people or students actually they're now just being so reliant mm. on computers they mm. go online search a summary then they just uh copyright it yeah so i believe that a world without computers would let um, the human race mm -hmm. or the humankind be more reliant on itself, which mm -hmm. is always good because yeah. it's, it uh, gives them a sense of accountability mm -hmm. for everything that they do. Mm. And uh, your take on that one? Uh, for our side, we believe that computers are a key part of life. Mm -hmm. Because I would like to look from a, spe a perspective of children in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. Growing up, you hear your parents talk about how they walked five kilometers just to buy bread. Mm -hmm. But computers, if you look at it, we have Amazon. Mm -hmm. We have things like Alibaba. Mm -hmm. They help us eBay. to order, eBay. Mm -hmm. they help us to order things to our doors. Mm -hmm. Because my job uh, as a person of debate mm -hmm. is to look at the perspective of different children. Mm -hmm. yes. So children to this day... 2023 mm. they have to walk wake up at 4 a.m and walk to a growth point mm. i say mm. growth point where they buy their different things so this technology can help us um to just to save energy these yeah. children are suffering mm -hmm. right now we are burning we are we feel very hot in here what about the outside mm -hmm. where the trees there's not enough oxygen because yeah. the trees are dying mm -hmm. so these children they also they also have a mind and uh, my job here is to speak on behalf mm -hmm. that computers help us with everything you can see this building right here that we are in mm -hmm. Well, once upon a time, it was on a device, it was a plan yeah. before it was made to be Yes, quantities. true, yeah. true. So these computers, overall, they make life easier mm -hmm. because instead of you having to draw or multiple people sketching around, mm -hmm. you could just go on Google, look at um, different buildings, yeah. and then you know that I want to mix this and this, I want to combine my own. Yeah. He also talked, um, Takuzwa also talked about creativity that these AI apps, they are promoting laziness. Maybe. Yes. These apps, they help us, do you know how? That the fact that if you be creative, okay, uh, let, let me just be creative. 30% mm -hmm. of the world right now is suffering from drought. But if I search on these apps, I know that what I just said is completely mm -hmm. wrong. I need statistics that mm -hmm. have been proven by different uh, scientists around the world. Yeah. And colors, if you see some of the questions, they specifically say research mm -hmm. because they need you to go out in the outside world and see these statistics. You need to see that um, Africa is rich. Africa has, um, is, has three trillion mm -hmm. maybe in, yeah. in uh, net worth. Yeah. The, this, is, this is not promoting laziness. It's, it's helping you to see like proven mm -hmm. statistics yeah. instead of being creative and lying to different people. Mm. 
Wow, I like that. I like that, but um, I'm still not convinced, you know, on that point of uh, when he said, um, you know, he's creating laziness, people. You haven't defended that very well uh, to me because, uh, look, you go there, you just uh, chat, G, chat G, GPT. GPT. Exactly. Okay, then you say something like a topic from uh, geography. Yes. It gives you an answer, then you just copy and paste. You're not reading, you're not whether you know, even just to digest what you've just read there, it's just a copy and paste. Is that good? Um, I feel like, yes, it's very bad at uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. but if we look, like I said, that I'm here to speak on uh, children's perspective yes. around the world, mm -hmm. these times you need to balance your colors and your actual academic work mm -hmm. because maybe, yes. You got your colors, you got um, 30 out of 30, yeah. but then you failed the actual content. Mm -hmm. This will bring you down drastically mm. to the point where, so you need help from proven information mm -hmm. around the world from different scientists. Yeah. Because once you spend time, okay, maybe, instead of, instead of it being proven information, it's now like you're making a creative. Yes. You are now just being creative, but you're saying things that are not proven. Mm. Okay, so how is the world without uh, computers beneficial to kids and, uh, you know, both at home and uh, in schools? I believe that um, a world without computers is beneficial to kids at school because it allows them to derive most of their things from their teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, it also gives them a sense of accountability, like mm -hmm. what I said. Like... Um, it allows them to, you know, to refer to most people and not uh, most computers. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives them a sense of um, a traditional way of uh, seeking knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it gives them um, social, it develops their social skills. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm going to ask DJ Ola mm -hmm. to, um, to do something for me, I'm not asking it through a computer whereby maybe the autocorrect will put in a few other things, mm -hmm. you know, to spice yeah. up the thing. Yeah. But I'm asking you face to face, mm -hmm. pers uh, personally. Yeah. So um, it's allowing me to socialize with you, mm. to develop my social skills, yes. and also to express myself more without anything um, or without a screen to process mm -hmm. and then to publish the, uh, something mm -hmm. which is not original. Because I believe that. Um, when something is written, then it's translated and all. I believe it's not from the heart. Mm -hmm. But if I thank you in person, yeah. you can sense the connection, yes. the bond, the yeah. humanity mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe that um, a world without computers is beneficial mm -hmm. to kids at school because it gives them a sense of uh, social accountability. Mm -hmm. And also at home, you know... Um, it's also uh, worth knowing that you should develop a good bond with your siblings, with your parents, mm -hmm. with your guardians. So I believe that um, what is the purpose of having a computer when I can just ask my dad, mm -hmm. dad, can you drop me off at school? Yeah. Why do I need a computer to then interpret what I want to say? Mm. So I believe it, um, it allows humans to be more in the moment, to yeah. connect better than uh, using computers. Do you agree, uh, Tafara? I strongly disagree. Mm. I would like to talk about the topic um, in academics, agriculture, science, and technology. Yes. This mm. brings me to my next point, which is job creation. Mm -hmm. Right now, you could be a technician, but how can you be a technician with no computers to operate? Mm. We're, we're, we're basically helping people lose their way of living. Mm -hmm. Because right now, if I were to come, there were no cameras, no microphones. Yes. Who would believe you that you had an interview with Mother Patrick Convent? <laughs> right now, these cameras are, are proof. Uh -huh. And also, this also helps us to give different perspective to different children around mm, the world. Mm. Debate for other grade sevens that are coming uh, from next year. Mm -hmm. This could also help them because they know what to expect. They know what to do. Mm -hmm. After watching DJ Ola show, this is not new to them. Mm -hmm. This could also help us and um um I could also a talk point of interjection. Uh, accepted. I would like to uh attack mm -hmm. uh Tafara's statement. Mm -hmm. He said that it's creating um no, actually, Tanatsuka stated that uh, computers are creating employment. Mm -hmm. But to, st uh, to some extent, don't you think if they keep on developing, they're actually taking that sense of employment mm -hmm. uh, back to 
to to us so basically what i'm saying is that you look at the uae whereby uh security guards are now being replaced by robots yeah. and also you look at singapore it has the highest artificial mm-hmm. intelligence yeah. percentage and it's reliant on artificial intelligence mm, or computers loss. exactly mm. so you you know um in uae i i have given an example so what is um the person who got their job replaced by a robot what are they going to think about computers and also how are they going to uh, provide food on their tables think about that okay my point was job creation mm-hmm. those people that made those robots aren't they making money out of this they are but what, what, what about those who are losing their jobs exactly because of the robots the, those who are losing their jobs mm-hmm. because of robots there are also other alternatives like also this this programming this programming as well mm-hmm. this is also part of computers mm-hmm. and also i would like to talk about transport if instead of uh standing in the hot sun for uh, a whole day mm-hmm. waiting for an omnibus yeah it's just a call away or an application away. Mm-hmm. You could just type like and then uh, you see the whole number. The like of Uber. Exactly. Uber, exactly. Mm-hmm. Instead of waiting in the hot sun, mm-hmm. you just call someone who is a few kilometers away mm-hmm. or even meters away. You might be lucky. Mm-hmm. And then they come and pick you up instead of waiting for these omnibuses mm-hmm. and everything else. But look, uh, here in Zimbabwe, we still have a challenge on that one. We do have computers, but we do not have, do not have those applications that you're talking about. Like, there's no Uber in Zim. There's actually, um, there's no Uber in Zimbabwe, the mm-hmm. application. But we also have different applications. We have, um, I was seeing as the other day, I think it's called F-Taxi, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe it was another alternative for mm-hmm. Zimbabwe not having Uber. Yeah. And also, our, I would also like to talk about the fact that that computers just make life easier. Mm-hmm. He supported me. He said robots are also are also used for security. Mm-hmm. Robots are also used to protect you, which means that these artificial intelligence they are helping you be safer. Instead of relying on someone, a bodyguard could just change on you mm-hmm. and then rob you. Mm-hmm. But this artificial artificial intelligence mm-hmm. is programmed just for your safety. Mm. But to like some that. extent. How sure are we that, um, you know, errors are inevitable. Mm -hmm. It can happen. It cannot happen. So what is the probability of that robot Mm -hmm. not turning against humans? I mean, who knows? Exactly. And also, um, uh, to reply to that, um, also, why would they release something that is not yet 100% sure? Mm -hmm. We know that everything, an iPhone, it has been developed for a whole year Mm -hmm. just for you to buy it and then use it. They they would never release something or the government would never allow such that an unfinished robot Mm -hmm. would come and protect someone. Yes, it might turn on you, but the probability of that is almost zero because these things Needs to be. They take time, mm-hmm. and um. This but look, with the with the load shedding here, no zesa, no. I mean, no, no electricity, and we are suffering, and we've got that robot. Mm. What do we do? What if it needs to charge? And also, as an alternative for not having zesa, we have what we call inverters. Mm-hmm. Inverters serve. They take energy from electricity, which is coming from the government, and as soon as zesa leaves you now have your inverter Mm -hmm. that's helping you to conserve electricity. Mm. At the same time, we have to consider that some inverters or uh, solars, they actually uh, have manual problems like overheating. Mm -hmm. And also you have to take into consideration that someday it might actually um, end up being something worse in the case that you wanted it to provide electricity to your home. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it can uh its surge can uh be ultimate and also it can burn down the house mm. that's a uh, very powerful from coming from you know uh, these guys from mother patrick i'm talking to them on the all seven podcast show right and uh, before we get into the next segment i just want to hear from these guys as we conclude because i've asked the other guys about uh, you know drug abuse i want to ask about pornography like you know is a way of me, maybe these guys are abusing computers and like you know then spend their time watching pornography and as little as you are you know you guys are just doing it you know in schools by the way at home so how best can we prevent that i think um in as much as our delegation does not want to support the opposing delegation mm-hmm. we can uh have some 
restrictions but at the same time these restrictions they're not a hundred percent proven yeah because like kunashe said there are some children who are gifted um in terms of their tech knowledge mm -hmm. so sometimes you know um these children can outsmart their parents or even the gadget mm -hmm. so i think you know uh pornography it has been a topic of discussion amongst uh many people for a long period of time mm -hmm. but still um there is no solution towards it and i think you know um i think it comes from the app creators mm -hmm. that um i think you know the people who actually upload those uh sites mm -hmm. in as much as it might be a stretch or a big ask i think they should actually be arrested or mm -hmm. sued yeah because it's very very bad you know the m mental toll yes. it takes on you yeah i mean who knows um if you watch it for two three hours yeah you have to go to work tomorrow um you wake up you're feeling tired mm -hmm. you know one thing leads to the other you're exactly. angry at your workmates mm -hmm. because you're just frustrated yeah you know you're tired and maybe you might even get involved in a fight with your mer mm. with your workmate yeah so i think that um these uh, uh creators these pornographic mm -hmm. creators i think they should actually be sued mm. and it's something which um should be taken to the higher officials mm -hmm. in zimbabwe in africa mm -hmm. and in on planet earth as exactly. a whole and your take on that on uh, uh my brother tafara uh, i would like to say that to the people who are watching uh, I feel as if pornography is suicide. You have a bright future ahead of you. You have so many things going for you, but you decide to search things that are not of your age. And mm. even if they are, they are still killing you. Um, I feel as if uh, to the children who um, to the children who are doing such things, these parents, um, like Kunashe stated, that it is as easy as saying that I was born in 1999. Mm. But if parents for example they try to send an email to their child yeah you search you see the information it says tafaram zamani mm -hmm. born in 1999 yeah of course parents so my uh way to the parents is just check what your children are doing mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's very suspicious for a child to put the wrong age yeah like what exactly are you trying to do behind your parents mm -hmm. so um i would just like to say that um please use the computers for the right thing research about your schoolwork find hobbies that will be playing games maybe it mm -hmm. may be also a, a way of distracting yourself mm -hmm. um yeah yeah that's all i have to <laughs> okay that was uh tafara and uh, kuzua from mother patrick you know guys i'm sure you can all agree with me right now that uh, the future is very bright with these kids these youngsters you know what many thanks to mother patrick you know for giving us these children to showcase what they can you know and i'm super proud of you guys and also you've been you have been representing zimbabwe yes wow a round of applause guys a round of applause it's awesome it's amazing so guys you'll be <laughs> Uh, seeing more of these guys on this show, different ages, uh, different subjects, topics. I can go say that you go about this, but these guys are compared and so I would some score of so. I think I should go back to primary school because I can't believe these guys are my grade seven. They're like A level. This is A level stuff. But these are great, just grade seven. So tell us about your you know plans, next year plans, you know, actually next next month, you know, yeah. form ones. Um, you know, form one it's uh it's a big milestone mm -hmm. in someone's academic life yeah. and also sporting life in someone's life as a whole actually mm -hmm. so i think um personally speaking i just want to adapt as best as mm -hmm. i can and also i want to continue um in pursuing uh debate and public speaking mm -hmm. the club i want to educate more people uh to the future school i'm going to and also i just want to give a huge thanks to all the support people have been showing to us and of course to the whole of zimbabwe mm -hmm. okay that's uh a wrap <laughs> okay so thank you so much guys for watching and i'll be talking to one of the public speakers uh, from mother patrick just a, a, a small interview just to find out from them mcdonald's manager say it's cool you know chi 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 and also these debates and other aspects of our so thank you so much for watching keep it 
Ola7 podcast show. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at DJ Ola7 and also, also our Facebook page, DJ Ola7, Instagram, DJ Ola7. Many thanks to all our sponsors, um, our advertisers. We really appreciate your support. From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free-to-air decoders, smart TVs with built-in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics. Grab yours today. Today, you know, I'm joined by uh, these beautiful uh, girls from um, Mother Patrick. So they are here and they'll be telling us about public speaking. You know, I love public speaking because I'm an event host. Uh, I, 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 I do, I mean, some MC for my events. Like Sierra, Sierra. And these guys are public speakers, not, I mean, MCs per se, but they'll be just, you know, talking about whatever they want to talk about. <laughs> Motivational speakers, I'm Okay, I don't know Ah, guys, what's that? But, anyways, we'll find out from these guys, these ones. So, hi, guys, how are you? I'm oh, fine. Hi, are you, are, you, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Sure, mm. okay, and you? I'm fine. You're fine as well. So, just tell us your names. My name is Kupa Kwasi Uh huh. And I come from Mother Patrick Convent Primary School. Uh -huh. I'm 12 years old and I'm part of the Relay Public Speaking Team and the third speaker. Oh, yes. wow. And you? Um, my name is Kim Enchuba and I'm part of the Relay Public Speaker as the second speaker. I'm from Mother Patrick Convent Primary School, which is a Catholic school run by Dominican Sisters. Wow. So did you go to Kenya as well? Yes. yes. I hosted uh, your, friend, your, your other guys last time and they told me that, uh, you know, they were in Kenya and they were happy. How was the experience in Kenya? Um, the experience was really fun. Mm -hmm. We got to interact with different people from different places. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was, that was really fun. Wow. I like that. So why then, I mean, or what inspired you to choose public speaking and debate? Well, actually, it's, it's a passion of mine. And then at school, there were these tryouts yes. for the school team, uh -huh. of which we fortunately made it. Wow. And I was just excited. So wow. It was just my path. Uh -huh. yes, that's how I ended up on the team. Okay. Um, I think it was just something that I just love to do, mm -hmm. standing on, on stage and being heard by people. When yeah. did you start your public speaking? Um, This year, in January. Both of you? Yes. yes. And this year... You also managed to go to Kenya. Wow, how is that possible, guys? Huh? Um, I think it just happened. It just happened? Yes. You're just so happened. talented, man. You're so gifted. So, you know, I understand you went as far as provincial, uh, regional, Sadag, you know, Muchinda, those Pan African debates. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm so happy for you guys. I'm very, very impressed. I'm happy for you. And, um, you know, how did that, I mean, how did that make you feel? You know, from other countries, you know? At f okay, you can start. Yeah. Well, we were really afraid. We did not know what to expect. Mm -hmm. But then we did our best, and then we just successfully came out. Um, at first, I was intimidated by the <laughs> people. But um, uh, we just did our best mm -hmm. and managed to win. Yeah. So what did you learn from, you know, meeting people from other countries and cultures, you know, and what were you expecting to see? Uh, well, the previous competitions, we have seen different kinds of people. So then I wouldn't say we expected to see people and say that this person is like this because mm -hmm. everyone is different in their own way. Yeah. So then, but at the same time, we were also very scared because we also didn't know what to really expect from mm -hmm. people. But then, yeah. Um, to be honest, I wasn't expecting a lot, but then, yeah, the competition was hard. But then we, uh, we worked together to mm -hmm. to win the the Pan African Debate Challenges. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't get what I was expecting, mm -hmm. but then it just happened. Oh, okay. How many countries were participating? Mm, about five countries. Five, which ones? There was Uganda, there was Kenya, 
and two teams from Zimbabwe. So we're four. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. So during your journey of debate and public speaking, obviously you have been, you know, competing with the best. So who was your toughest uh, competition? Well, I would say students from America, Virginia School. Yeah. Oh, yes, they kind of <laughs> yeah, <indeed. laughs> because well, they are really. I think they are the toughest competition uh-huh. that we have to say that these are the ones we we wouldn't want to see at the competition. And the competition, yes. and they were there. Yeah. And, and how did how did they uh, perform? Well, their debating got um, third place, mm-hmm. and their public speaking team got relay second, got second place. place. Oh. Wow, that's that's good. So what drives you to do your best when you are, let's say, on stage? Um, I think it's when um, I think about how I started and how it's going to end. Mm-hmm. I think it's the it's how I want to make my parents proud that mm-hmm. makes me like, yeah, mm. do my best. Yeah. So how do you, uh, I mean, do you experience stage fright, you know, and how do you deal with it on, when you're on stage? Because public speaking, people are like, okay, yeah, that's like, it's, the, the room will be like full of people. Mm. Um, okay, she helps me with stage fright, to be honest. <laughs> she tells me it's, a, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we we um, normally experience stage fright, uh-huh. and then you you just remember that we are in relay speed. So yes. There are three of us. Uh-huh. So you're saying I can't go up there and be afraid because there are two other people supporting me. Yes. We're going to be on stage together, so we're going to do this together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. So how do you balance the debate and your studies? You know, I understand sometimes you travel a lot, like you're in Kenya recently. And and you know how do you balance the two? And also sometimes maybe memory which my sports as well. Um, at school they said like Mondays there's sports, uh, there's um study and public mm-hmm. speaking, yeah, uh, and debate. So um, uh, from two to three they study, and from three to four they're clubs. So since debate and public speaking is a club, we can handle the. Mm. Yeah. So there's no balance here. Yeah. yeah. So how then? I mean, what are the benefits of doing public speaking and debate? It helps you with analytical thinking, critical thinking, mm-hmm. and comprehensive of thinking. Yeah. And then it enhances communication skills mm-hmm. because you'll be interacting with different people. So then you learn how to communicate to the different types of people that you see there. Mm. You know, growing up, I uh, remember in primary school, you used to be asked about uh, ambitions. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? Like a soldier. Some of them saying, I want to be a pilot. Some saying doctors, lawyers. But some of them are no longer even, you know, <laughs> they're they are doing something totally opposite. Yeah. So what do you want to do, guys, when you grow up? Um... First of all, I want to be heard by the world when I grow up. You want to be heard? Yes. And wow, that's big. And after I'm heard, I can continue to um, um, continue with my studies as nursing because I want to be a doctor. Okay. Yeah. Wow. When did you, uh, you are still there, at, um, you know, you said you want to be heard. Yes. Please elaborate further. Um, I want to speak um, in front of people, encouraging people to do their best because this wasn't easy mm-hmm. to yeah so um i want to be heard and tell them like it's going to be easy yeah. you don't have to give up and yeah okay and you when i want to go when i grow up i want to be a doctor but then there are many varieties and mm-hmm. i still haven't found which type i'm interested in mm-hmm. i'm interested in almost everything so i'm still having a tough time deciding on what <laughs> yeah that tough time yes so yeah uh-huh. And uh, what advice you know do you want to give to other kids that I mean of your age? I would say that you should follow and run for your dreams because God knows what's possible, what you're able to do and overcome. So you should give everything a chance before just saying I can't do it. Mm-hmm. You only know once you can. Yes. Um, I want to tell the others that failure is merely a stepping stone to the path of greatness. So if they achieve, and uh, if they achieve what they want to achieve, it's going to be okay. And mm-hmm. yeah. And let's talk about issue um, of uh, child marriages. The girl child is uh, is really you know affected. You would mm-hmm. see a thirty five year old man, forty year old man dating a sixteen or fifteen, thirteen year old girl. What's that? It's taboo, man. What's your take on that? Um, I think um, the society has to just declare 
uh, I think a war against it because mm-hmm. it's not right for a girl child to be um, married by a 50 year old man yes. it's not okay mm-hmm. and it's really ruining the society of nowadays mm-hmm. so we have to take a stand and declare war against mm-hmm. it and your, your take on that I'm saying that action should be taken because the girl child also has rights. So I'm saying people should commit to their fulfillment of making sure that the girl child's rights are ensured. Mm. And what's your advice to the girl child? I'm saying don't give up. You have a voice, so let it be heard. You can't just let people choose for you. You have to tell them that, no, I want to make my decision in this and I don't want to do this. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. Welcome. Okay, guys, that was the genius kids from Mother Party Convent Primary School, right? Yes. That's in Waterfalls. Okay. I'm sure you've been very, very intelligent. No one will so I'm going Mother Party as well. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. My name is DJ Ola7. Owen, we Kwam on your number one podcast show in the land, the Ola7 podcast show. And this segment is called The Genius Kids. And this program so that you know, one of those are like Wanda and they'll be inspired as well. Thank you so much to our sponsors, our advertisers, and you, our viewers. And keep supporting the Ola7 podcast show. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at DJ Ola7. Good night. From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free-to-air decoders, smart TVs with built-in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare, and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics, grab yours today.